Hi guys, so this is the first of three hepatitis virus centered videos that I promised you guys in class on Friday. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna cover hepatitis A virus and hepatitis E virus together because they largely cause similar syndromes. Um, hepatitis A virus is also known as infectious hepatitis, while hepatitis E virus is enteric or non-A, non-B virus. Um, most infections in the U.S. are actually caused by either HAV, HBV, or HCV, and they can all produce kind of an acute illness um, where we expect to see things like um, malaise or abdominal pain and certainly jaundice and the release of liver enzymes. So that's where knowing your AST and ALT will be really, really helpful. Um, so we're going to focus in this one on HAV and HEV, and then I'll make other videos for um, the subsequent uh, hepatitis viral infections. Okay, so major cause characteristics of HAV. Um, this is a picornavirus, so that means it has an RNA genome. And it also has a pretty standard picornavirus structure. Um, it's got that really... Um, really stable icosahedral capsid. It has the viral protein that's linked to the genome, VPG, and that kind of acts as a primer for RNA synthesis. So it's very similar to the other picornaviruses that we'll talk about. Um, it's spread by the fecal oral route. So when we were discussing this in class on Friday, um, I think one of the students said something like the patient got it from drinking some dirty water on vacation. And that's actually a pretty good way to think about it. Um, people contract hepatitis A virus when they have like shellfish or practice poor hygiene or are exposed to dirty water. Um, so these are all ways that, you know, we expect to see hepatitis A contracted. Um, it has a fairly variable um, but often long incubation period. So somebody comes back from, you know, vacation where they had some shellfish and two weeks later they experience symptoms, might be hepatitis. They tell you they traveled somewhere two months ago and you still think it might be hepatitis. Well, you still might be right. It's just that the incubation period is fairly long. Um, but once it starts, boy, does it get going. It's got a really abrupt onset of those icteric symptoms. So remember, when we're thinking about hepatitis virus, we kind of have three stages. You've got that prodrome phase, which begins with malaise, low-grade fever, rash, arthralgia, and then you move to the pre-icteric, and that's where you have anorexia, nausea, vomiting, headache, food aversion, which all sounds pretty nonspecific, right? You throw in diarrhea, you, you know, you've got some sort of gastrointestinal thing. But what kind of starts tipping you off to it might be something with your liver is that there's right upper quadrant pain. And that actually kind of makes you go, uh, maybe it might be something going on there. Um, and then we move to the icteric phase. And this is that dark urine, the clay colored stools, and then it can progress to overt jaundice where we see, um, you know, the actual yellowing of the skin. Um, the good news with HAV is that it's normally pretty self-limited. Patients are most of the time going to recover cover, um, rarely causes fatal disease in adults, and it has a slightly higher mortality rate in children. Um, and it doesn't usually cause a chronic liver disease. It doesn't go over to chronic liver. Um, and the greatest news about HAV is that we have a vaccine for it that's very effective. Okay, so let's talk about how it actually causes disease. Um, it causes disease not through cytolysis. This isn't your standard viral infection where it's going to go into the cell, replicate, 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 fill the cell up, and then burst um, virus out and kill the cell in the process. That's not how we're losing the hepatocytes. We're actually losing the hepatocytes due to the immune response. So what I have here is actually a picture of just a completely standard immune response because this is what's causing disease in this case. So you have a virus infected cell and it wants to infect, it contain the virus. So what you're gonna have is you're gonna have a lot of type one interferons getting produced from either the virus infected cell or local dendritic cells. You're going to have CD4 positive T cells primed. Um, in this case, we're talking a viral infection. So we're gonna see a lot of IL-12, which is gonna lead to more interferon gamma, which is gonna make B cells produce neutralizing antibodies. Um, it's also going to lead to NK cell priming, which can then secrete interferon gamma and kill viral infected cells. So all of these things are going to contribute to the death of the hepatocytes. Um, CTLs are going to come in and kill the hepatocyte. Um, if there's vir virions on the surface of the infected cell, neutralizing antibodies might come in here and bind 
the um, infected cell or the cell that has virions on the surface and NK cells might kill by ADCC. So all of this is going to be happening. And this immune response, which is completely necessary and completely normal, is going to kill your liver. Um, so what happens is the virus replicates in the hepatocytes and Kupfer cells. And then as the virus is produced in this cell, it is released by exocytosis, leaving the hepatocyte intact, and there were, the virions are released into the bile and from there into the stool, which is how we get that fecal oral route. Um, and you can find it pretty high in the stool, approximately 10 days before the icteric symptoms or antibody can even be detected. So it's kind of an indicator of how effective this virus is, but it's kind of not doing anything. It's just hanging out. Um, but unfortunately, our immune response is going to have a problem. So then we're going to have the interferon, the natural killer, the CD8 T cells, the ADCC from the antibodies, and all of that's going to destroy the hepatocytes. And then you're going to get icterus, jaundice, um, and disease, basically. Um, but like I said, it doesn't cause chronic infection. So eventually, the immune response will clear the virally infected hepatocytes and the liver will regenerate and you're going to be fine. So what do we expect for diagnosis and clinical syndromes? As I mentioned before, everything is caused by the immunopathology. It has a pretty long... Um, incubation period that goes into prodrome that can be anywhere from two weeks to 50 days, which is kind of what's shown here. You've got this long incubation period. Once that happens, though, disease begins, and disease can be anywhere from a week to two months, kind of depending on how these symptoms develop. 80% of patients are going to develop jaundice, but very, very few, like less than 1%, are actually going to move on to fulminant hepatitis, and they probably had something going on with their livers beforehand. Okay. So you have a patient, they come in with acute symptoms of hepatitis. How do you know if it's HAV, which is probably going to resolve, or HBV or HCV, which you need to treat? Well, the easy answer here is serology, okay? So first off, if you have a patient that has HAV IgM, they definitely have acute hepatitis A virus. We only see IgM within kind of the first couple of weeks of exposure to a virus, right? So we have this HAV specific IgM. It's going to show up around the start of symptoms, around the peak of symptoms, and then it's going to hang out for about two to anywhere like four weeks. So they have it going about five weeks here, but it's going to hang out and then it's going to start coming down. Eventually it will become undetectable. Okay, now remember, H IgM is the first antibodies that are produced. Then we class switch with CD4 help to IgG. So eventually, IgG is going to come up. Now, IgG gets a little tricky. If the patient only has HAV IgG, you're going to want to see if they were vaccinated because it could just be that they were vaccinated. That's the simplest solution. Now, the good thing is if you're testing for hepatitis A virus, you probably tested for B, C, D, and you can also ask the patient about their vaccination history. But this is how you would know. If they have HAV specific IgG, um, they've either been exposed more than two to three weeks ago or they were vaccinated. Those are your only options. Okay, so... This was one of our patients, Vic DeMort. He had acute HEV. And I'm actually going to skip ahead and we're going to talk about HEV first because HEV works very similarly to HAV. Um, this is an enteric encapsidated RNA virus. So it's, an, again, another RNA virus, but it's not a coronavirus this time. Um, it resembles HAV. You can have acute, self-limited, and it's typically less severe than the other hepatitis viruses. However, HEV is more likely to move for, to fulminant hepatitis than HAV. That said, neither of them are that likely. Both of them are like under 3%. Um, once again, transmission is through the fecal oral route. It has that same weirdly variable um, incubation period and that same abrupt onset of icteric symptoms. The patients we most worry about for um, HEV though are pregnant women. Why? Their livers are already being taxed and they're carrying an infant. So HEV can be pretty rough for moms and their babies. Another major difference between HEV and HAV, there's no vaccine. So if you see antibody to HEV, they were exposed to it. The question is, did they resolve it and it's something else? 
or is it just HEV? And you would know that by looking at the other lab values for the other viral hepatitises. So let's talk about our two patients. Let's start with Boris Gump. So Boris was a 42-year-old male shrimp fisherman who presented with nausea, anorexia, itching, and dark urine. He'd recently come back from Costa Rica. Otherwise, he had no medical problems, no medications. He has a beer at night. Um, he has a sexual relationship with his wife, who is HIV positive, but not on treatment, but they do utilize condoms. Um, his vital signs are normal. You know, otherwise he's fine. He's got a little bit of icteric sclera. There's no rash, but he does have excoriations, right? Because he was itching. If we look at his labs up here, his liver's kind of a hot mess, um, with the exception of the INR, but even that's pretty high, okay? Let's look at his labs. He has HAV IgM. Right off the bat, that tells me he has acute HAV. Let's see if there's anything else. Now, everything else is negative except for this, HB surface antigen antibody. This is a surface antigen for hepatitis B virus, but it's included in the HBV vaccine. So he was likely vaccinated to HBV. So then if we look at the actual results, that's what we get. HAV, acute infection, HBV, he's been vaccinated, He's negative for everything else. As far as treatment, we just kind of watch this guy. There's no indication for a liver transplant because with HAV, 99% of them are gonna recover. 1% will move to fulminant failure. All right, let's take a look at Vic DeMort. He's a 57-year-old man from Ethiopia who currently lives in Chicago. Um, he recently went to go visit a mosque in India. He's got vomiting, scleral icterus, and right upper quadrant pain. So we're definitely thinking about his liver. He doesn't smoke, drink, or use drugs. Liver, again, not looking so hot. Look at that bilirubin and the AST and ALT. So let's look at this now. All right. He's negative for all of the other things here. So really, we're just going to focus on HAV and HEV. He's HAV IgG positive. So that gives me one of two options. He's either immune, which is most likely, or he was exposed at some point in the past and resolved. Regardless, he's immune now. Whether it was by vaccination or normal you know, exposure and resolution, he's fine. We're not worried about HAV. HEV, though, he's got IgM. That tells you an acute HEV infection is occurring right now, and that's what's listed here in the results. So what are you going to do? You're just going to watch his liver. If he goes fulminant or gets a lot worse, you might consider transplanting, but only about 2 to 5% of patients with HEV actually require transplant. Most are going to recover without incident, and after he recovers, you're just gonna kind of look at him and say, maybe we get you um, immunized for hepatitis B because currently he's not protected against that and that's an option. So that's all I have on HAV, HEV. Hopefully that helps.